today i'm gonna be showing you how to do a burst fade slash mohawk because as you can see my guy came in looking rough so we're gonna start off this haircut by doing a trim so before you always do a trim you want to dampen the hair and make sure it's easily moldable and easy to section so when starting off my trim i like to give myself three sections to work with one on the right one in the middle and one on his left and i use the eyebrow or the middle of the eyebrow as a reference point when creating the width of that middle section so i did one on the inside of his right and then one on the inside of his left and that's going to be the width of that middle section now after we get that established we're going to start off by grabbing that middle section and this will act as our guideline or reference point when trimming the rest so what i'm going to do is pull all that hair up and cut off the desired length and in this case we're not taking off much a little under half an inch but we're going to take this and move straight back with this guideline so as you can see i found the desired length we wanted to cut off and now we're going to start moving back and you want to stay nice and organized when doing your haircut trims because i know for me one of the hardest parts um when i was learning how to use scissors was trying not to get lost in it right because i would just pull hair up and grab and the reason i established this system of cutting um to be so beneficial for me is because it allows me to stay organized and consistent so i can get a nice and even haircut so now after i went back i'm moving my way forward to make sure it was even and then we're going to comb it all over to the right and now we're going to start in the front and move our way back and you can see towards the inside of my left hand is where we cut and we're just going to match everything to that length moving straight back and you can see as i get towards the ridge of the head i'm still pulling straight off of the scalp i'm not rounding it because i don't want to give them a triangular shape i want to keep it nice and squared so as you can see i'm pulling straight off and cutting everything to that length and now after we complete the right side we're going to take that middle section once again and comb it over towards his left and do the same exact thing and you'll notice when i'm making my sections i'm trying to make them as clean as i can i don't want them to be zigzaggy and now we're going to pull the hair up and do the same exact thing starting with the middle moving towards his left super clean super simple um easy to follow and understand so hopefully this helps you you know when you tackle your own trims as well And now we're finishing off the left side of his head, still pulling straight off of the scalp. As you can see, we're almost done doing a nice even trim. And this process probably took about six, seven minutes, so it didn't take up too much time at all. So we're gonna comb everything forward. And what I like to do is make sure that the front is the same length as well and lays evenly across. So I'm just going to pull the bangs forward and point cut them to give it softer edges and a more symmetrical uh, line all the way across. So now after trimming the top we're going to move on to the back which will be a lot simpler because we're not taking off too much length since it already was shorter than the top so you always want to start off by re-dampening the hair and we're still going to create a middle section pulling up from the top and then we're going to work our way towards the bottom so i'm just cleaning up the ends here taking off about a quarter inch and we're going to use this middle guideline that we're creating as um our guideline for the back as well but the thing is with the back it is a lot skinnier as far as the uh the long hair since it does transition into a blend in the back so there's not a lot of hair to trim on the sides So 
So now I'm just creating a cleaner section from the top and the back here. And what we're going to do is take horizontal sections using that middle gu guideline as a reference point just like we did with the top. So I just took a small section and I'm going to connect everything with that middle guideline working our way down. Super simple, super easy, not really much to do with this part of the trim. And then after we create all our sections, what I'm going to do is go through it and cross check to make sure everything is even. So what they don't tell you about becoming a successful barber is you shouldn't start off by charging $100 a haircut and you're not going to make this absurd amount of money without first getting clients in your chair. So what I've done is put together all the information that I've learned in my nine years of being a barber into one place where I teach you about the different forms of marketing that best suit barbering to get clients in your chair. So that way you don't have to filter through tons, tons of content to find exactly what you need. As well as in-depth tutorials where I give you tips, tricks, and techniques to take your hair cutting skills to a whole nother level. So if that is something you're interested in, go ahead and join me at Drake Clipper Hands Academy. I hope to see you there. So now after we complete the trim, what we're going to do is dry it, but we're not going to blast dry the hair without a nozzle. What we're going to do is we want to grab our diffuser and dry it with the diffuser. Now reason being is because the diffuser is going to dry the hair in place, so it's not going to make it frizzy. It's going to bring out the curls a little more without blowing, you know, the hair everywhere. So for styles with curls or any form of texture, I like to use the diffuser, but if I'm trying to do a pompadour or something very, that has a lot of volume, I'm gonna use a channeler. Now after we dry it, what we're gonna do is get into the burst fade. So you wanna start off by creating our bald line in a circular shape at the end of the eyebrow, going towards the back. Now this isn't really a burst fade, it's more of a mohawk because it does go so far back, but it's not a traditional mohawk that gets super skinny towards the top either. So that's why it's like a hybrid between the two. But you wanna go ahead and create this guideline and bald out the bottom. And then we'll build the rest of the fade on this bald line. And you wanna make sure that this is nice and clean, especially with this type of blend because you have to maintain that circular shape in the process of creating this burst fade and now we're going to follow it up with the shaver to get it slightly closer to the skin and you want to be sure to not take the shaver up all the way to the top of that bald line you want to stay slightly under it and now after the shaver we're going to come in with our lever all the way open on our wall magic clip and we're going to go up about a finger's width still maintaining that round shape but we want to make this guideline about a half an inch or a quarter inch not a half an inch and the reason you want to give yourself some room when blending is because we want this blend to be nice and stretched out we don't want it to be too compressed we want it to be nice and gradual from skin up into the length on top So now we're going to come in with our lever closed and we'll gradually open up that lever as we move up within this guideline to completely get rid of it. And as you guys seen, I did get to drop Dre Clipper Hands Academy. It has now been out for a little over a week um, and it's been amazing, man. Shout out to everybody who's purchased the course and become a part of the community. Again, if that is something you guys are interested in, it's going more in depth in your haircuts and your barber career. To get to that next level, link is in the description to go ahead and enroll in Dre Clipper Hands Academy. And what comes with that is in-depth tutorials, tips, tricks, and business, um, you know, tactics to get clients to sit in your chair, as well as you're going to become a part of a community of like-minded indiv individuals that are striving to get to that next level. 
um you'll have direct contact with me you can send me your haircuts i will give you feedback i'm super excited to see what this turns into and continue to build with you guys who enroll in the course again if you guys want to purchase that the link is in the description and you see after i went with the one guard open i closed it to lighten up the line in between now we're going to move on to our two guard with the lever open now with this two guard i'm not trying to create too harsh of a guideline so i'm coming in and i'm scooping out as i get towards the top of that blend again because we want the transition from the uh fade into the top to be as easy as possible so i'm coming in and scooping out and when going towards the back that tends to be the trickiest area when doing any type of burst fade or mohawk because you don't want to take it in to the point where there's no hair on the back so i encourage you to just be careful um when you get towards the back so you'll see me come in and use a lot of the corner or the teeth of that two guard so that way i don't risk cutting off too much hair now after this two guard i'm gonna come in with my three guard open just to raise it a little bit higher um and make it a little easier when doing clipper over comb into the length on the sides and you'll see i'm using that comb as a stopping point so i'm coming against it with my clipper and then my comb i'm stopping how far i go up and you can already see little by little this blend is coming together now we're going to drop down and fade down with our one and a half open and we'll close that lever little by little until we get that dark line completely blended So I'm just continuing to work with that one and a half, trying to get this blend as clean and as seamless as possible. And you can already see it starting to come together little by little. And now to get rid of the last line in this fade, we're gonna come in with our half guard lever all the way open and we'll close it little by little until that last line is completely blended. This is what's gonna bring everything together um, get us through our steps and then after this is where we would go back in detail any dark spots that we see so i'm coming in open seeing how much it takes off and then i'm going to close the lever little by little and you will always want to start off open because you can always take more hair off but if you initially cut off too much hair you know you have to raise the fade and we don't want to do that and I'm using a lot of the corner of the blade so I don't risk taking up this half guard too high. And now to transition into the length on the back and in the sides, I'm gonna do some clipper over comb. So what you wanna do is come in with that comb and flare out just a little bit. And any hair sticking out of the comb, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of. So I have the lever open on my clipper. I find that to be a good um you know length to have on your clipper when doing clipper over comb and then if you guys are scared to do no guard what you could do is throw a one guard or a one and a half on there so that way you know you don't chance taking off too much so now we're going to do it on the sides as well to bring everything together and the shape of this blend is coming together very nicely i think it's transitioning into the length in the back and top nicely as well and that comb flat against the head is equivalent to a one guard and that really helps me when gauging how much hair is really going to take off and now to soften up that transition into the length on the back and top we're going to do some thinning shear over comb and that's going to allow us to maintain that shade of darkness while not raising the fade up any higher than we want it to be and now we're going to frame out the back in the shape of a v um which i believe suits this haircut a lot better if this was more of a burst fade where we kept more hair on the back i think rounded would have suited the haircut better but since this is more of a mohawk since it comes all the way to the back the v accents this haircut very nicely so as you can see i started in the bottom and then went to the top and what we're going to do is match the v on his right side with this left side and this part can be pretty tricky so make sure you're combing the hair down every time you line it up to make sure that it's truly 
um, symmetrical all the way across and the blend comes into the V very nicely in the back and now we're gonna get into the lineup in the front so I'm gonna begin this lineup by starting with his uh, hooks first and because it's gonna make it a lot easier to line up the front so I'm starting at the top of the arch and then I'll go to the bottom and meet those two points in the middle and that will allow us to get that nice round shape without digging into it too much and now we're just gonna refine it get rid of any hairs that could potentially be hanging over And now for this other side, we're going to do the same exact thing. But what you'll notice when you're cutting people's hair is each side of the head is a little different. And on this side, in order to match the hook on the other, I had to dig into the hair a little bit more. So I'm starting at the top and going to the bottom and meeting those two points in the middle. But you'll notice that the hair that had to come off in order to make sure that both hooks are even is a little more on this side. And I obviously asked my client if that was okay before I did it because you don't ever want to quote unquote push somebody back without asking um, and in order to make him symmetrical he was okay with that and in this case this client's hair doesn't grow back too crazy um, especially since there wasn't much hair that got cut off but as you can see the round hook with the round blend complement each other very nicely it makes the blend pop and now getting into the front lineup, I always like to start in the middle and then dictate which side I want to go to first. In this case, I'm going to move towards his left, trying to keep it as natural as possible while at the same time getting it as sharp and as, as um, crispy as possible, right? Because as you can see, this is a lot of bang action, a lot of overhang. So that isn't a pushback. Those are just hairs that are hanging over the natural hairline. So I want to get those cut off because we want to make the hairline look a lot denser than what it actually is. And now we're going to go to the other side and do the same thing starting in the middle and then working towards his right corner. And you'll notice as you look his right corner is a lot lighter than his left. So I'm keeping that in mind still trying to keep it as natural as I can. And we are going to be keeping this client's hairline natural, so we're not going to be applying any enhancements. So I'm trying to get this as clean as I can, knowing that I'm not going to use any color. Because a lot of times what barbers do is they'll rely on the color in order to get the hairline sharp and crispy, when the goal should be to get it crispy naturally. And now to really enhance the hairline and get rid of all that stubble, we're gonna come in with our razor. Now when using the razor, you wanna stretch the skin in the opposite direction of which you are using it. And it's just gonna allow the razor to glide over the skin a lot easier without causing you know too much irritation or cuts, which you don't want. And now we're gonna come to the other side and do the same thing. Stretching the skin, bringing the razor to the hairline and just taking it to a whole nother level. So as you can see, this is how my man came in looking, and this is how we left leaving. We got them together with a nice burst fade slash mohawk. If this video helped you in any way, shape, or form, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And while you're at it, go ahead and look at the link in the description. Press J Clipper Hands Academy, check it out. And if you are interested in going to the next level, enroll, and I will see you on the other side. But while you're at it, go ahead and watch this video for me. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to another video to the Dre Clipper Hands Academy. Welcome to Dre Clipper Hands Academy.